Sean Collins in the house, 822, back here at Breakfast Television. This is your song? I love this song, uh, The Greatest Man Who Ever Lived uh, by Weezer. It's about eight minutes long, and it's just him saying how awesome he is. Is there a personal, promo. personal story or connection well, to this Well, my wife song? and I really love Weezer. Yeah? Yeah, we're huge fans of Weezer, and we went up to see them at Casino Rama, north of Toronto, when they toured. It was amazing. And I said, well, he'll never play this song. It's eight minutes long. He played the whole thing, and it was fantastic. It goes through about eight different movements of weirdness, and it's amazing. It's so he's fun. got a personal connection. I do. Well, not just that I like it. To the Weezer, you like it. I'm hey, so upset because I was just going to talk about Chinese New Year, oh. and now my thunder has been stolen. Oh. What can't we have anything else? I mean, really. Anyway. But the comedy, that's your thing. I do that, too. That's yeah. your thing. You're here at uh, Yuck Yucks this weekend. And uh, I was just saying, I mean, you talk about your wife. Uh, Valentine's Day, you had to spend here in Vancouver. Family was over in Toronto. Yeah. Because you're doing the touring thing. My wife came with me. Oh, she I did? I brought her along. What'd you guys do? Well, we went to sleep. Yeah. I did a show, and she. we wandered around, and then we're both tired because we have children. And then my wife is gleeful. She's so excited that she gets to go to sleep. So that's that's how we celebrate it, our gift to each other. That's, that's what don't happens. Don't touch me and go to sleep. <laughs> that's what happens when you're married with kids. That's it. You just are so happy to just not have someone crawling on you. Well, I was crawling on her, but she she just pushed me off and then went to sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. But, but you have breakfast television I'm this up, morning. This is, a, like, this is like a, an encounter, a loving encounter it's right something now. something special. Yeah, it is. I can feel it right now. Mm. Awkward? All right. No, just not awkward. awkward. <laughs> Uh, what's awkward? Awkward is, it's, uh, it's all loving. It's, it's only if you let it be awkward. Yeah, that's, that's pretty right. much how I don't works. mind. Uh, do you mind? I don't think so. No, nah, they don't mind. And listen, man, you about wear a lot of hats in this business. I uh, do wear uh, a lot of hats. An author, uh, you know, a performer. You've got your own albums, TV specials. What's your favorite aspect of what you've accomplished 25 years in the comedy business? Well, uh, my professional wrestling career is probably my greatest success. But uh, What was the name? What was uh, the moniker? Mr. Fisty. Oh, really? Was <laughs> yes. it the left or the right? This is me in my, this is my, uh, my costume I used to wear. I'd come out and uh, try and convince you to buy something, and then I'd punch you I out. <laughs> you look good in a bow tie. I feel good in a bow tie. But um, I think probably the most satisfying thing is I write novels for kids. Like um, I have five published novels, uh, and they're available anywhere, like fine bookstores. Uh, but uh, they, that was probably the biggest accomplishment because it takes a long time to write a book by yourself. When you're doing comedy, you're out talking and getting re response right away. TV's even is harder because you did that delayed gratification but writing is just so so lonely and you don't really know what's going to happen and, and if it's going to be any good and you're reading this and going this is terrible and then you give it to somebody else and they either say well it is kind of terrible you should fix it yeah. or it's fine and you go and when you see your book on a on a on a shelf at a bookstore or in a library or in someone else's hands, it's quite an amazing feeling. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, you've reached the masses, not only here in Canada, done some great work on The, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, Ellen DeGeneres as well. Uh, do you still get nervous when you put the material together and take to the stage? I mean, you're doing yucks tonight, or is it just kind of you go with the flow and see what well, happens? Well, I go with the flow. And you know, the thing about comedy is it could go horribly wrong any time at all. You never know. But generally, as you get older and, and more accomplished, that's how you, you remove the variables. You get to read the room and go, okay, this is not going to work. I'm going to do this. And when, you know, I, I've got enough material, and if I don't, I just like to extemporize and talk and make fun of people and whatever. And that, that tends to work out well. So I, I don't, I've never felt nervous about the actual performance. You yeah. know, I enjoy it. That's the part that I enjoy. Uh, yeah, I, as, if you don't give me any time to prepare, I'm probably happier. And you know, the great thing about when we were talking about this in the green room with the Yak Yak show that's coming up this weekend is that there's some younger comments on the uh, comics on the circuit. What do you remember about your very first time on stage for all the aspiring comics? Well, uh, I was in a group called Corky and the Juice Pigs. There were three of us. We did an amateur comedy contest. So that what was nice was there were three of us together. So we didn't we had each other, yeah. you know. And when you have that, you kind of perform for each other and. Uh, that pushes you through. And I was trained as an actor, so I, I, I liked being on stage. I was comfortable there. So I, I think when I, the first time I did it by myself, that was a little bit nerve-wracking, because before, there were two other guys who would pick you up if something fell flat, but then you have your own self to worry about, and you have to do all the things, set up and punchline and all of that. So that was a little more uh, worrying. But so stress. that was a, it's a lot of stress. It's a stressful job. 
and people take it very personally. You know, when you're out on stage and they're not laughing, very rarely in a Shakespeare play do people yell, I don't believe Hamlet is sad. <laughs> you're wrong, Hamlet. You're not going to kill yourself. Uh, but in, in comedy, they say, yeah, that's not funny at all. They give it to you. You suck. <laughs> because it's deceptively like a conversation. I, I think comedy is a conversation. You talk to some an audience, and they are the other person, and they give you their response back. And their response can be really harsh. Uh, because people, everybody thinks they're funny. That's the other thing about comedy that's hard. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks they have a great sense of humor, and almost nobody does. Yeah. No, but that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Well, if everybody had a great sense of humor, they'd all, you know, they'd be doing comedy. Well, listen, uh, the people of Vancouver were very nice. I know you are. Come out to Yuck Yucks. You can check out Sean on stage uh, all weekend long on uh, yuckyucks.com. Good Sean, times. Thanks for it's coming. It's wonderful in. to see you, Rias. You as well, it's my man. Delight. You as well. All right, Russell Cage, standing by. As in, Sean, I, I love you already. I thought it was the only guy with Weezer on my playlist. Yeah, saw, yeah, I saw them at Rogers Arena there a couple years ago and knocked it out of the park.